Hello, this is Christopher Ian Chenoweth. Do you know, my friend, we need to go to God more than we do to people for advice. Often we go to people for advice, but where we need to go is God. There's an old Danish proverb which states this, He who builds according to every man's advice will have a crooked house. There are two ways to get understanding. One is to follow the guidance of God which dwells with you. And two, the other, is to go blindly ahead and learn by hard experience. That's called the school of hard knocks. And I've graduated from that school and so have you. But there is an easier way to go through life than uh, through constant stumbling and being hit over the head by the cosmic two by four to get our attention. Jesus says in Matthew 23, 24, this, boy, talk about pointed. It says, you blind guides, you blind guides, you strain out a gnat, but you swallow a camel. And in Luke 6, 39 through 41, Jesus says, can a blind person guide a blind person? And that's not talking about a person that's lost its sight. It's, it's spiritually talking about a person that has no concept of the way to go. He says, he asks a question, will not both fall into a pit? There was a little girl who had an uncle by the name of Uncle Mac, and she was visiting her uncle with three of her siblings, and they were all thirsty at the same time, like children get. The little girl went to Uncle Mac and said, Uncle Mac, I am thirsty. Can I have a drink? Well, the other children immediately decided that they were thirsty too, so all four lined up. The bigger ones pushed the little ones out of the way, so the smallest one was now at the very end of the line. Uncle Mac, they all screamed, we're thirsty. Well, he had a bottle of apple cider in the refrigerator, and he poured the apple cider into clear glasses. Three got clear glasses of apple cider, but the fourth, the little girl, got the very bottom of the cider, which had some sediment in it. Well, the others quickly drank their apple cider, and the little girl, <laughs> she just stared at hers. And she said to Uncle Mac, I don't want that. I can hear my, I can hear my granddaughter's voice saying that as I read this. I don't want that. Look at that. It's got all that stuff in it. Uncle Mac said, Oh, that's the best part of all. It's filled with all the good stuff, the vitamins. And that is good. And she stared at the glass and she said, yuck. I don't want any of that. And she started to cry. As they were talking, Uncle Mac looked over at the cider and told her to look over at the cider glass also. And they saw a miracle. All the sediment in the glass had floated to the bottom. It was as clear as the others were. My friend, this is what prayer does in you and I. It causes all the sediment that we build up in human judgment and human opinion and being in groups, getting advice from here and there. It allows all that sediment to float to the bottom. And then you have clarity. You are able to get the full clarity of God. And that's what I pray happens to you today as you go into prayer. Now, I don't know how cloudy your mind is right now, but if you're dealing with some real challenges in your life, I can pretty well guarantee you, your mind is cloudy. So you need to pray. 
You need to sit in the silence of prayer and allow that sediment to fall to the bottom and have the crystal clear vision of God coming through you. Now, take a moment and pray with me. Dear God, I pray for clearness of thought. I pray that all the sediment in me goes to the very bottom and that I can have a crystal clear vision of where I am to go and what I am to be and what I am to do in this moment. I pray that I have a purity of mind and a purity of heart and God help me create it. In Jesus Christ's name we pray for this to occur right now. God bless you.